A lot of people think Canada is almost as easy as going into a new state in the US. And while it is close and while the languages are similar, uh, there are challenges. What are some of the challenges that uh, you should be thinking about when entering the Canadian market? The border between Canada and the US is the longest land border in the world, and it really provides great opportunities for US businesses. For many Canadian consumers, it's easy to access the United States to do business, to travel, for shopping, or even to pop up across the border just to pick, pick up parcels, which happens all the time. In fact, Canadians and Canadian businesses purchase more goods and services from the United States than any other country in the world. But that said, there are some challenges to doing business in Canada, and sometimes the hardest part is just knowing what you don't know. So I'm just going to touch upon a few things that you might want to think about before you start doing a business in Canada. So first of all, Canada is a bilingual country. So that, that means that there's two official languages here in Canada, at the federal level anyways, English and French. In addition, each of Canada's provinces and territories has adopted its own official language policy. And understanding the language requirements will be very important to you when you're gonna start doing business here because what you sell and who you sell to and where you sell to, that's gonna dictate the level of French you need to incorporate into your dealings. So for example, should you wish to engage potential clients in the province of Quebec, you're probably gonna to need to have a sales rep or distributor that can speak the language. Bilingualism is also going to affect your packaging and labeling requirements. And the, the Canadian Consumer Packaging and Labeling Act requires that all labels be bilingual. That's both French and English. And that you include product identity declaration, net quantity declaration, and the de dealer's name on the package and label of all consumer goods that are sold in Canada. In addition to that, information being in English and French, all weights and measurements must be in metric, not imperial, and there may also be a requirement for the inclusion of things like hazardous symbols. Let me ask you a quick question, Tracy, about that. So that's, not, that's obviously not just about making it easier to sell product to consumers. Legally, you're required to do these things uh, in order to sell into Canada. That is correct, yes. So the, the, that's the Canadian Consumer Packaging and Labeling Act. That is um, to all goods that are sold in Canada, and it is law to any company that's selling here in Canada. Does that matter if, for example, I'm selling from my U.S. website to an individual consumer in Canada? I still need to comply with that? Correct. If it crosses the border and it's going to be sold in Canada, it needs to comply. Wow. Okay. Thank you. I know you got more, so... Okay. So item number three I want to talk about uh, is shipping and logistics. Uh, this, is, this can be a big one. Canada is the second largest country in the world by landmass. We have six time zones, 10 provinces, and three territories. And at the same time, although Canada is really large, the population is only one twelfth that of the size of the United States, which is about 38 million people. So while Canada is physically larger than the United States, it only has a fraction of the population. This can create a challenge for when you're shipping logistics, when sh for shipping and logistics, in that there can be a great distance between distribution locations and client sites. And since 80% of the population lives within 180 kilometers of the border, the further north you go, it means the more challenging it can be to get your products there. And that can increase your costs and shipping times. We also want to look at standards and certifications. And, well, Canada has a high degree of alignment with the United States in this area, and, and standards and certifications are commodity specific. And there's a general rule of thumb that if you have a product that's being sold in the United States and requires a standard or certification in the United States that you must comply with, it's probably going to have a Canadian version that, of, a, of a standard or certification that's required here. An example of that would be if your product requires a UL certification in the United States, it's probably going to require a CUL certification in Canada. And it can be really challenging to determine which regulations, permits, and licenses may be applicable to your products. There's really no one place to go for the information. Um, the best way to determine what your requirements are is to contact the Canadian Standards Association or one of our staff and we can help figure out what's, what's required. Um, Duties and taxes are also an important consideration when you're doing business here, um, and it can really affect an international shipment's total costs. So goods sold in Canada may be subject to duties and taxes, including the GST, which is a federal goods and services tax, the PST, which is a provincial sales tax, the HST, which is a harmonized sales tax, and or it may also um, uh, the QST may also be applicable, which is the Quebec sales tax. Uh, tariffs depend on the country of manufacture, not the country from where the product is purchased. 
um, while US, uh, USMCA agreement eliminates tariffs on goods that are manufactured in the United States and shipped to Canada. However, if your product includes components that were manufactured outside of the United States, then your Canadian customer is also going to need to pay tariffs on those items. One of the biggest complaints when a Canadian consumer purchases something from a U.S. vendor is that they receive two bills. And this is because while the U.S. seller pays the GST at the point of importation, it's usually the importer of record or the buyer's responsibility to pay any additional taxes or duties or fees from the border to their destination. Um, to make your sale transparent to a Canadian consumer and give them one bill instead of two, you may wish to consider the non-resident importer program. The non-resident importer program was developed by the Canada Border Services Agency and it makes the U.S. seller both the importer of record and the exporter of record. And by doing this, the U.S. seller takes on the responsibility of paying duties and taxes, offering one invoice with all the complete costs, thereby making it a seamless transaction for the Canadian consumer. Um, to become a non-resident importer, you will have to register with the Canada Revenue Agency and get a business number, and then you work with your customs broker to apply for the Canada um, for an account with the Canada Border Services Agency. I just want to mention one additional thing that in 2021, CARM was announced. CARM is CBSA's Assessment Revenue Management System, um, and it. it is an additional requirement for all non-resident importers um, that says that you need to register in the CARM system um, and submit all your import documentation and payments before you actually make the shipment. And some of the details of CARM, the CARM program are still being worked out by CBSA, but the final phase to implementation is expected to be completed in 2023. And as a non-resident importer, you will be expected to comply. Happy to talk with people about that further if there's any questions. There's some intricacies to that program. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really interesting. Before you go to the next one, so the so when you talk about invoicing, I presume on on a website, a Canadian consumer when buying a Canadian product wants to see one total number. They don't want to see the GSM. They don't want to see anything else. They just see the total number. And then when they go to a U.S. website, all of a sudden they got to see a bunch of other numbers. So the idea, obviously, not just on invoicing, but on your website on checkout is to make it easy with a single number and no additional payments after the fact, correct? Yeah, and as an example of that, I always, I always use this one. I, I ordered a, a luxury purse from a big entertainment company in the United States at Christmas time, and I let's just say I paid $100 for the purse. And uh, so I, I did that all on the US website, paid my $100, the product was shipped, um, before I received the product, I got an email from Canada Border Services Agency saying, hmm, here we have your product and we're holding it at the border until you pay this additional bill. And when, it, uh, because it was a luxury good, there was a luxury tax on it. There was also the PST. There was some additional customs charges because the customs only took it to the initial customs fees that I paid with the big company only took it to the border. So I had to pay additional. Fee. Anyways, there was a lot of surprise items in there. Uh, and I ended up paying, let's say, an additional $60. So in my $100 item in US dollars became a $160 item. Uh, and that you can understand why that would be uh, upsetting to a Canadian client who thinks that they're going to only pay X number of dollars when in fact they're paying X times 1.5. Um, so the non-resident importer program takes that guesswork out of it and provides one final bill to the Canadian client. And that's a huge, that's a huge differentiator. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really the, to me, the win or lose model where the companies who are figuring this out are accelerating and those who aren't, the consumers are simply not going to repurchase. That's right. And there, we have heard from our clients in some cases there, you know, the Canadian client was irate and they, they decided that purchasing from the United States wasn't a great way to do it. Uh, the non-resident importer program actually helps because it uh, not only does it give that one final bill, but it reduces shipping and customs charges because it takes it from door to door instead of from door to border and then from border to door if that makes sense. So there's, there's a lot of, a, a few cost savings within that program as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, now, obviously another one you've got talking about kind of how do you deal with complying on anti-spam and all and your website? How do you get all that going? 
Canada's anti-spam legislation, that's the law that protects consumers and businesses from the misuse of digital technology. So it's basically meant to uh, reduce spam and other electronic threats. But it's also said to be the, one of the most draconian pieces of legislation on anti-spam that there is in the world. Um, it really significantly limits the way that companies can send commercial electronic messages uh, like emails. And this legislation is really going to affect the potential marketing campaigns that your company has within Canada. So there's basically three requirements within that program. The first is that you have to have consent of a recipient before a commercial electronic message is sent to them. Meaning if I wanted to send an email to you and I don't know you, I would have to have consent from you before I can send that email to you. You must have identifying information on all commercial electronic messages. So not just um, from company Bob's company, ABC, there actually has to be a person's name and contact information on that email that you're sending out. And then the last thing that is a requirement on any commercial electronic message is that you have to have an obvious unsubscribe mechanism. So at the very bottom of the page, you'll often see, um, you know, if, if you no longer wish to receive these messages, uh, please, you know, un to click here to unsubscribe. That has to be on the email. And U.S. companies doing business in Canada have to comply with this legislation as well. Okay. And so obviously some of those things we currently do here, so you may already have them in your website, but some of those things just make sure you have that all laid out and some services and some checkout counters already have that embedded. Uh, depending on the platform, whether you're on Shopify, BigCommerce, Magento, WordPress, uh, WooCommerce, etc., those those services may be embedded, but make sure that it has clearly in there a Canadian compliance uh, element.